In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. People of Mandruid, we thank God for the day, for the good weather, for our existence. Many people from Australian land, you know, they left and they cannot even have one day extra. So we want to mourn for them and just spend the minute, you know, like honoring them. Um, and, and just want to, to say that we are offering conversions for all the family who lost their good their loved ones. When as uh, we thank God that He saved for us the priest who is really taking a bit of courage to speak a word of truth and putting his life on the line. God preserve him for a better uh, life to preach the gospel on this dark hour. As we all, of course, know that Israel, you know, hit back Iran. And this is not a joke. Either you are into the Middle East or either you are in the end of the world. What is going to affect us, uh, uh, not only economic, like, you know, the the price of the, the interest rate and people losing job, the thousands of people losing job on, on June into the news and things like that. But the war, you know, with the sadness of it and killing of soul. But that one is not killing people. This is ex this extinguishing, you know, finishing, bring everything. There is an echo, please. Echo? No? Just see if it's less echo. So the, the Third World War is about to finish the human race. The thing is, many people on the human race didn't listen, didn't hear, or didn't take the 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 um, the message of the gospel in a good heart and and bring it to their heart and believe in it. I was praying today, you know, right now with a guy who's really uh, totally giving himself to every demon in the earth, and I was praying with him, you know, and he was converting his word into more evil. He uh, wants something for me, but he repeats something. Very different. What did he was saying? I died for myself. Bless you. Say, what well, the blessed but the dead. God bless the dead and things like that. So people are not aware they are on the verge of an end for human race. If those people who have the power are not putting themselves in a mode of being wise and listen to God. And of course, you cannot go everywhere and anywhere and listen to your religion because your religion is going to tell you lies. We have to come to the book of life. This ministry, thy word, is truth from the word of God, from the gospel, uh, from the Bible, the word of God, the eternal word of God, then out of it, there is no other truth. And we preach for every kind of religion and every kind of denomination. And um, today, maybe I will be hurting a bit some of the, my friends, the Christian friends, but today I wanted to preach about the, the, the prophecy of the 70 weeks of Daniel. Very important. And I want to talk to uh, the presidents of Israel and the president, whatever, of Iran, uh, what, president, whatever they call themselves. The leaders of these two nations and the other nation, of course, all the leadership in position, including Putin and all that. Because we're coming to, again, you know, when, when you even give like a gun to a kid, Huh? And you make it loaded and you think it's okay. That's not a game now. And the world is here just passing day by day, not caring too much. So today is that simple. I'm going to offer the gospel for you before anything. And then if you want to quit, quit. The gospel of Jesus Christ from the first Corinthians 15 is as simple. You know that Jesus died three days and then he reigned. And he is on the side of the right hand of the Father. And because of this death and resurrection, Jesus opened the door of eternity for us. So he giving us his eternal life. He is eternal life. And he take the death penalty over us. God did, you know, perform every sin. You know, Jesus paid for it on the cross. Not only for that, but for the tribulation as well of mankind. But today here we can see the picture here, like war is coming and people, you know, like really don't know. You have to know and you have to be on one side or the other, uh, either the side of God or the side against God. So if you are on the side against God, please enjoy yourself the most, most that you can because your days are numbered. But if you are 
on the side of God and he confessed, you know, that the Savior of the world, the Messiah, came to save you 2,000 years ago and he took your place, then you open yourself for an eternal life. Life full of joy and full of fulfillment. So as you can see that here, the kingdom of God is about to be revealed. No jokes, no delay. And the king will sit there and he said, bring those one who didn't want me to rule over them. You know, it's, it's not gonna come a judgment on the world and everyone uh, hated him. Um, so here is uh, the Daniel 7 is saying, the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and a dominion shall serve and, and obey him. There will uh, come time that the children of God will be oppressed and even killed by the coming of the Antichrist, the beast. So we are on the verge of that revelation of the beast coming when the treaty is signed between the Arabs and the Jews. And definitely there will come to an, an, you know, an agreement. So they will not really, uh, this is not Armageddon. They have to have a treaty. And then with the treaty, we start the, the seven years of the Armageddon, the end by Armageddon war. So God, you know, anoint people. And he gave us the prophets to tell us about what is happening. Tell us what is going to happen by one prophet, two prophets, three prophets, at least in the Old and the New Testament. Same, same vocabulary, not different. So no one have an excuse not to listen to the word of God and they get the warning. We are warning people today, it's going to be serious. When in, we are on the verge, the, the, the church to be, you know, uh, taken away or raptured. Rapture means taken suddenly. So that's the best thing you do. You know, um, I'm just going to give you only one cool clue for your salvation. People have many versions of salvation. But the one that I desire to tell you is the one of the guy who was on the on the cross with Jesus on the left side. He said, I want to be with you. Remember me when you go to your kingdom. And he said, yeah, you will be with me. So it's not like the life of the Christian with do and not do or Jews or whatever, the do and not do religion. But you wanted to be with him or not. You go into the church and the preacher start to make it a short S so he can survive the preaching. But today I'm going to tell you, if you want to be with him, he wants to take you to be with him. That's the secret. So if you are on the last breath of your life, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And the Lord is the Messiah. There will be a rising of um, people will have bodies, uh, immortal bodies that will live into the millennium thousand years. You never experienced such things that such grace before. And they will rule and they will be king. And they take the righteousness of God and his justice and bring it on earth for thousand years. The children of God. Well, here is God Almighty. He's going to come this time to bring judgment and justice. Well, I'm, I, I found a bit of surprising. What I want to preach today is the 70 weeks of the prophecy of Daniel 9. And why I want to go for that very hard prophecy? Because it's, it's time. It's revealed. I always, you know, drop this one because it's too hard for me to understand it. The calculation and the mess don't go together in a way which I can understand. So I never tackled that part. But before then, God showed me other things. So today I'm going to preach about uh, the, the beginnings of the 70 years of punishment and exile that the Lord God, our God, you know, took Israel into. And then we're going to speak about the 70 weeks of Daniel next time. So here what happened. Um, Daniel was a prophet who was taken as young into the exile of the Babylonian. And uh, uh, God was giving him dreams and explanation of dreams. He was even able to give the dream to the king without even seeing him, the, without him telling him the dream. Nabuchadnezzar was a very powerful, vicious, strong. He took, you know, um, a part of the word, big part. So here what happened. Daniel, he was on the same time as Ezekiel. 
I never knew about that, that the Jews dropped the book of Daniel, as they always do into the good part of the scripture. They put a curse on everyone who, who uh, read Isaiah 56, the suffering Messiah. And on that book of the Daniel, they didn't put him with the book of the prophets. Even there is details into the book of Daniel that no one can tell you into precision like he did. And is telling us about what is going to happen and what's happening nowadays exactly and give us timing. And I didn't know actually that Daniel prophesied exactly about the coming of the Messiah, the first coming. Well, in the name of Jesus, we speak peace, everyone. We speak peace over this area. We speak peace. What are we going to pray? Because into the news, they're telling us there is a, 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 a pandemic uh, a spirit, you know, over Australia with uh, mental illness. So we have to speak the power of God and the presence of God over those, this area in Mandru, especially. It's full of demo people are demonized and suffer from schizophrenia and effect of drugs and alcohol. So we pray that the peace of God will come upon them, that the presence of God will be dwelled in this area, that these people will suddenly feel like they are delivered. When they saw Jesus, they bowed to him and they said, why are you coming before the time to torture us? So we speak that deliverance will come as a mess. We're not going to have an epi epitome of mental illness. We're going to have an epitome of knowing the Lord and loving him and worshiping him while we still breathe. Well, women, don't be afraid, you know, for the saving. Those people who wanted to be with the Lord, prayfully they are with the Lord now, their time came. So the more important is your life. What is your life? Is your life come to an end or shortly come to an end? Or when are you going to be the end? Will you meet the Lord Jesus or there will be an end for you? So, brother and sister, we pray peace over Australia, peace over Sydney, peace like we never experienced before, that the leadership of Australia will have the right message and see the, the right thing. Then you can see our prime minister went, you know, to go to Bondi, but didn't go to Fairfield. Well, Fairfield is more dangerous because uh, Bondi is the war between gender, men and women, I guess. This lost guy wanted to have a wife. No wrong in this, but his mental illness didn't take him to the right direction because the preaching of the gospel was not done. If the children of God preach the gospel, this man should be sane, not insane. And he, you know, a man with this beauty should not really uh, doing what he did. He should have a beautiful wife and a beautiful family and raise children to the Lord. So. But the war on the fair field is more difficult and more serious. This one is between the Middle East, the Muslim and the Christian. And those people left their country years ago, you know, tortured many years in other nations than theirs to be sitting there, you know, and now the eruption of that even has come again, you know, and, and I don't think like even 1% that this guy is mentally disabled. He is able and he know what he's doing. But the Albanese, our prime minister, with all my respect to him, he should visit that area more and, and uh, discuss this, you know, thing um, before it could go to a drama without his knowing. Bondi Junction will never bring wars, but Fairfield can bring because there's a lot of people around of the Muslim nations, and especially the one who gets, you know, visa without being tested, you know, from the war area. George, hi. How have you been? Very good. Yeah, very good. Where's, where's the rest of the family? They come, we alternate. Yeah. How so are you I doing? The one. Very good. This is George, my friend. Hello, hello. And, hello. and George, you know, love the Lord. I'm not a believer. Yeah, he's not a believer. But you know what? I didn't give up on him when I go there. I want George to be with me. Do you agree with me that the life of God will be poured on George yeah. and he will be with us, you know, into the presence of Lord God Almighty? The Lord loved George and loved many of the Australians. So we were discussing here today the, the coming, you know, that spirit which has to be peace over Australia. 
the spirit of killing in the name of Jesus no more. Well, sanity will come on the Australian and people will be set free of the mental illnesses as we pray, especially this area of Mandroot and the effect of drug and addiction. We're gonna see like a change into the mood, you know, from very, very high temper and craziness and everyone go and, and attack the others and I've seen it now two or three times and start my preaching. So a place where people really love each other and endorse the message of the gospel. Jesus died and he raised from the dead. Because of his death and resurrection, we will be with him. He is the resurrection life. And I pray that my brother, my brother George will be with me. I will never give up on him. We had a few conversations before, but he's still, you know, really not convinced. May the Lord give him the desire of his heart and fill him with joy that he will know that joy is not coming from earthly place, only from the heavenly. So like I said now, the Jews reject the book of Daniel totally and completely, where that book is full of prophecies. It's full. It's full of the details of what is coming, what is exactly in the war, and what is Netanyahu and the, 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 the minister of, or the president of Iran are doing. And we talked about last time about uh, the Armageddon War, if you wanted to look and see the gospel, how he described it. But today we're going to talk about this sin that the Christian did. And actually, I don't go, go to the sins of the Christian because I know that someone going to be attacked, you know, uh, offended. But we are still the, in the end time. And if you do not speak the truth, when are you going to speak it? We are talking about the 70 years that God put an exile over Israel, that put an exile over the nation. For a reason, it's not going to be known to any of us, unless you are a reader, deep reader Bible. You not really know, ah, because they worship idols, they go to other gods, they took the gods of the name. No. But what happened here? The prophecy of Daniel 11, 33, 35, 12, 10 is saying that there will be people who have understanding wise people we are they are kept for the end time they were raised and they will start to know things and they help others because you know every every prime minister of uh, of the whole world you're christian or not christian confessing jesus or hating him they read the book of the prophecy which is only found into the word of god in the bible because he is on, on one side of the other and he wanted to know but brother and sister i'm telling you those people who are raised in the end time as the prophecy of Daniel 11 and 20 saying, they are capable of explaining the time and understanding. And, uh, and praise God, you know, those 70 years of captivity, what happened here? Just, just listen to me carefully. I am not a seven-day Adventist. Because seven-day Adventists do not have salvation because Christ is just a human being. And I bear, you know, that I'm not attacking you. I'm just telling you, receive Christ as God, the Son. Then you have salvation. But th these are maybe the people who understand the Sabbath. Today, I'm going to take you to a few Bible verses that going to surprise you. Leviticus 26, the Lord said, and the land shall enjoy her Sabbath. So the Sabbath is given by God for human beings to rest in it, to have more fellowship, enjoy time with God. And on the seven years, the land should be having a rest. Land should rest it. But people didn't listen to the instruction that God gave it. Well, God is not giving you a list of do and not do. The Lord, the creator, he know the recipe and he know the, uh, the, the, the catalog of what is happening into the lands. The land needed rest. As long as it, and otherwise it be desolate. And the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. Can you imagine? that this land can enjoy the Sabbath. What is, is the land like hearing and feeling and like a human or whatever? Well, it's the word of God. I'm just reading verses for you. And then in Jeremiah, God, Jeremiah 25 and Jeremiah 30, uh, uh, 29, with 25 you say, and it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished, I will come and punish. God is punishing the people of Israel 70 years because they ignored the Sabbath. No one will tell you that truth. Not even, uh, but one day, when I came here to this country, I was working seven days a week. And on Thursday, I was working from nine to nine. 
truly books. And Saturday, Sunday, double, you know, you pay more. And I opened the Bible and one day come to me that prophecy from the second Chronicle 36. And the word is saying, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, the land has enjoyed her Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept the Sabbath to fulfill three scores and ten years. So what happened here? There will be punishment on the land of Israel of 70 years because the land was not Sabbath, was not taking rest that the land deserved. That they kept the, 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 the covenant that God made with them one day through Moses in the beginning. Well, not through Moses, from the beginning. God rested into the seventh day and commanded a day of rest. So here is God saying that he will return and punish the king of Babylon because he already besieged the children of God for 70 years. I am not really to give you history teaching, but I'm gonna tell you the secret of the problem because we philosophize everything until we cannot see the truth. The truth is people really do not honor God, they do not love him, and the rest of God is something that is un unexpressible. But when you enter into the rest of God, when you really enjoy, like I said, the only thing which can lead you to salvation, like the, the guy who was on the right side of the sea, he said, I'm gonna be with you. I said, okay, be with me. You'll be the first one entering in the kingdom. And he never did anything. So many Christians think that they're gonna make it because oh, they pray the prayer and they cry to tears. No, the main thing is do you wanna be with him? Do you want to enter into that rest and that peace beyond understanding, that joy that can unexpressible? Then when the, the, the apostle Paul visited heaven, he came and he said, I don't have a word, undescribable. I cannot, it's, it's something that it's not into the vocabulary of human being that I can tell what is it and how it happened. That's the way the apostle, he couldn't say, but it's something that is it make every cell of you satisfied to the core. Would you like to be with him? Would you like to receive that peace? Would you like to get that peace to kick every demon out of your life? Here, 70 years, the people were punished because they could quit or push away the rest of the Lord. So the, the rest of the Lord is not for the Christian to annihilate it. That's the blasphemy. Brother and sister, I'm an Orthodox and I like, you know, the, science, the whatever, but I'm telling you, I love the word of God more. The church did a blasphemy. And even the Seventh-day Adventists, they call it, that's the, the mark of the beast. I, I don't know what they're talking about. What I know about is this. In Exodus 31, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath through the generations to a perpetual covenant. So that's an eternal covenant. How can come a pope or a emperor or whatever Christian church stop the Sabbath and take another day? You can have your Sunday, resurrection of the Lord by all means. But this is a perpetual covenant, which means it's an eternal covenant. Not anyone can break that covenant. So Sabbath is an eternal covenant and was broken. And Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. So for you to understand, the Lord wants you to enter into that rest. And Apostle Paul, when he described it, he was talking about the people who couldn't enter into the rest of the Lord. He took them in a journey of 40 years, give them food, and then give them whatever they desire and covering, you know, uh, a cloud over them into the day and put them fire in front, in front of them to, he, to give them light into the dark and warm into, and all things. And the, something that I cannot really believe. There was a, a, um, a rock which was following the people of Israel. Not much preached about it. It's in the New Testament ver uh, verse from Paul. They're walking with them and this rock was giving water to the people of Israel. They saw all this, but they never saw him. They never knew him. But today you can be, you know, like really a great church goer or a great Bible teacher, but you don't have the Holy Spirit to explain things in the truth, you're more likely um, on your denomination. So I don't know what's the English word for it. Whatever your denomination is doing or preaching, you follow them. But break that curse because the church of Jesus Christ is broader 
and many people had to enter from it, from the Jewish people, from the Muslim world, from all kingdoms and all, all uh, towns that will enter from the truth, because there is no other truth. Thy word is truth, that's the word of truth from the word of God. Jesus is the rest. Now let's go back to the covenant. You do not know covenant. Problem of the Christians, they wanted to do the half second part of the book. Jews wanted to take the beginning of the book. And neither know or can understand everything. You have to fall in love if you're a Christian to the Old Testament to be able to understand the thing. Because God didn't promise Jesus anything. There is no covenant said between some man or a woman into the New Testament that God make a covenant with him. The covenant is in the beginning with, Mo, with Abraham. And the covenant is for his children. No tax, they don't have to pay, pay tax to get this. I was always thinking, I, want, I pay high, highest tax in this country. Why my children have to pay tax when they hear what I have? Well, the word of God is saying here, that covenant is for your, you and your children. So that's why the Jews think, you know, they have a deal with God. They had the contract, strong. What well, the Christian are th thinking, they had the covenant into the blood of Jesus, yes. But God didn't sign a contract with Jesus. He signed it with Abraham and his children. Unless you are a child of Abraham in a way or another, then you cannot enter into the kingdom. Cut those, and the Christian pick all what they like. They cut the Sabbath. They cut the church, they cut the feast of the Lord. Let me show you about the feast of the Lord. Jesus was circumcised. They stopped the circumcision. Don't you understand what is circumcision? Man and woman are under one covenant. Every family was the covenant of the male. The father of this family or the male is circumcised that it's the community. Now, a community covenant. They never understood. When the Passover was coming and the angel of the Lord passing to produce that, what he was doing, he see it was only you know, one lamb. So that covenant of circumcision, and I'm going to tell you all the Muslims are circumcised. You do not know. At least all the Egyptian, Muslim and non-Muslim, Christian are all circumcised. So they have now a covenant with God cannot be broken. The covenant of circumcision, the covenant of the Sabbath, and the feast of the Lord. The church cut all those things, boom, delete. And even the word of God is saying, it is eternal. This is my feast. So here is bless her, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Let her flee in the name of Jesus. And then we think that the circumcision of the heart is a story coming from the New Testament. No, the circumcision of the heart is come from the Old Testament, from Ezekiel. So there is a covenant of circumcision. There is a covenant of the Sabbath. What is the, 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 the circumcision? God said to Abraham, this is my covenant with you. Every male on the eighth day who is born to you should be circumcised. And then if they wanted to take the communion, or the, the Passover into the Jewish language, if they want to do that, they have to be circumcised. They have to have covenant with me. So today we are people with no covenant. We do not know. And the Jewish playing the game that they like because they have understand that first part, but they do not know the rest of the book. They cut the book of Daniel, which I'm gonna preach about it in detail, the 70 weeks of the prophecy of Daniel, which is fulfilled in our day. Today I wanted to preach about it, but say, well, I put it next time. Because here God showed the 70 years. Now the 70 weeks, we are in the, going to the 70 weeks, the last week of the prophecy. We're going to talk about it next time. But here is the thing. In Ezekiel, in that you have brought into my sanctuary stranger, until from size in heart. And uncircumcising the flesh. Ezekiel 44 who brought that uh, topic. But now here, I don't want to attack Apostle Paul, but I really have a little bit of things on him. The Apostle Paul was bragging 
about him being circumcised and tell the people don't be circumcised. He took people who are circumcised into the temple to desecrate it into the sight of others. I just have all those Bible verses, but I don't have time for it. Point is, that's a covenant of Abraham into the circumcision. And how many people of the West world are circumcised? Raise your hand if you are one of them or the male of your family. They are not in the covenant of Abraham and be careful. Jews kept that secret for themselves. And the Jewish, take one Bible verse, they enlarge it and make wrong things. It's eternal, it's perpetual covenant. No one can stop it. Hate me, Christian, as you like, I don't have care. This is the hour when we can, can be my last time to preach. God knows, but I have to speak to them because these are the ways that God is helping you to keep you. It's not the way of salvation, the only way is Jesus, but to protect you from evil. You know, like you take vitamins, you do this and that. You know, when uh, I just was meditating on this, when he said to the woman to cover her head, why? Because of the angel. I never understood the meaning of this. What is the relation between woman, you know, uh, prophesying and whatever, have a, a veil on her head? Because of the angel. And what I'm talking to you today is about the same cause. Because of the fallen angel. You need to put your children on the hand protection level. The devil is very, very wild now. What happened in Australia last week never happened. I've been here in 2001 and five years more in, 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 in uh, New Zealand. I've never heard of such violence. This, we see it into the, the Egypt day in and day out. They go and slaughter, you know, the, the, uh, the, the monks into their monastery. What? And they take the girls and they rape them. We see that every, and they burn the church alive. Ah, oh, it's an electrical, whatever, sorry, sorry. They close the doors on them. So this cruelty, we've seen it. And we survive it. Because we have power. We are attached to some roots. The Orthodox Church was the most suffering. The other day, the Muslim was saying, they come to the Orthodox Egyptian Church. But the Orthodox Egyptian Church are sleeping. You have a strong, powerful weapon. It's called the language. You speak their language. You suffer of what they did for you. And today you can talk to them the way of truth, but they are Islamophobia. They're so afraid. They're so afraid. They're so afraid to speak the truth. Today we're talking about covenant. Covenant it means God gonna keep it. Either you do it or not. The beauty of God that he's going to keep his covenant. If even this Bible verse was born, if you are not faithful, he is faithful. The Lord is faithful. He's going to keep his side of covenant to Abraham and his children. And the sign of the covenant is circumcision. Well, thank God that all my family are circumcised from the beginning till the end. We didn't know that a man can be uncircumcised. I've never heard of it except when I came here in the West. So this year, like I, 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 I spoke, you know, earlier, uh, last time, time before, give children communion every day. Give them communion. Baptize them. This is to protect them from the evil, from the angels that I'm also full talking about. Women, cover your head for the angels. And I'm telling you, cover your children until they grow into the decision to go for God or to reject it. But don't, do, don't put them uncovered and let all the rubbish and they be friends with uh, all the demons in every... My grandchildren try to convince me of Pokemon, they are good and all. They are good, Teta, just watch them. And all sorts of whatever. And that Pokemon is very old thing. But they offer them all the demonized format in a human physical things and, and the children are friends with them and they give them names. And then they're gonna select Jesus. When they left, they left the life to the maximum with all hardness of heart, with all the drugs and sexual and the hormones on their sexual growing and all those things. Why he said to the woman to cover her head for the angels? Today I'm saying to you, cover your children because the fallen angels now are very actively working. Defend your children, put them in a place. And then if you decide to reject Jesus, it's up to them. The way that you will enter into that resting place. I want to be with you. 
There is no other way. I want to be with you. I've seen people coming sometimes to my clinic and they jump and run because the presence of God is intense and they cannot take it. No reason, but they want to leave. First time happened to me, I was working to OBSM on that time. And the woman just touched her chair and she wanted, and I was so scared to lose my job. I didn't do anything to her. But I'm telling you, the presence of God is something real and good to your bones, to yourselves, to your soul, to your spirit. It's not joke. So today, I talk about baptize the kids. Christian, Protestant, charismatic, whatever. Baptize the children. Give them communion as young. Anoint them with the oil, the Holy Spirit, as young as you can. And if they decide to err, it's their fault. The children are in covenant equal to the, the, the covenant of Abraham. You and your children. But the covenant sign is the circumcision. I'm going to convince you to go and do it if you didn't do it till the day. Uh, we pray a lot of money for every child here to be circumcised because there's not many doctors who know how to do it. Because we want that covenant. And even after I heard that, and, and the thing is, Apostle Paul talk about the, you know, that we don't, if you do one, if you are circumcised, you have to keep all the law. Why he didn't keep the law? And why he's bragging about his circumcision? And why he took people into without circumcising them in the temple. So I said, if you wanted to go for the ordinances of the Passover, Exodus 12, you cannot accept be circumcised. So they will eat the Passover dinner and you will not be part of it. That's probably why the church do not commu give communion to the, the, the public. Well, for me, I see it in a different angle. What Jesus said, whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood, abide in me and me in him. It's the covenant. It's the promise of eternal life without condition. No condition. So how dare to take the eternal life away from people because they're not baptized, because they're sinners. But they need eternal life like you. If you take Jesus, every food after that will be dull. You want, to want him every day because he's so pure and so good. And every cell of your soul and spirit and, and, and physical will rejoice because this is God who is linking with his bride. There is a union here that you cannot understand. It's like positive and negative, you know, and the battery and the circle is going around. You feel God. You feel the beauty that you are searching for. All those people who go for suicidal uh, things because there is hole into their soul is created. That hole God created unless it's filled by Him Himself. You're not going to get the spouse or the children or your job or whatever. That hole is created by God into your deepest part of you. And this is the only one who can feel it is him. It's a perpetual covenant. Sabbath is a perpetual covenant. Let me talk to you about the feasts. The seasons and the feasts. And this is here the more important thing. I'm not preaching nothing. Today I'm preaching because of the war. My preaching today is for the war. Well, this is just for you to understand what is happening. What well, has to do with the war, circumcision, and those things? Listen to me. Speak unto the children, Le Leviticus 23. Children, and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim as the holy conv convocation, they are my feasts. And he put a list of feasts of the Lord. They're going to continue to be there till eternity. They are eternal feasts, eternal covenant. But listen to me. That's more important about timing. Say timing. Timing. We are talking about the timing of the atomic bomb who's going to be thrown on humankind. And I just told you that the prophecy of the 70 of uh, the book of uh, chapter 9 of Daniel, which the Jews drop it. They drop all the book of Daniel in a very, very uh, uh, silly way because it's per day the, the, the birth of the Messiah. This is what I'm going to discuss next time. Jesus' ministry came exactly as prophesied. 
on the 69 weeks of Daniel, then they disqualify that book. And he's telling them about all the details of the Antichrist and when he's coming and what he's doing. And the treaty with the Muslim was every, every single thing. And when exactly the, the, the Messiah will be cut and not for his people. Brother and sister, read that last part. I'm gonna explain it next time, that part of the, the Messiah, because it's all about timing. So those feasts are important because some of them are fulfilled and some of them yet to come. And they are done for timing. Listen here a little bit of few verse before then. In Genesis 1, this is the beginning of everything. And God said, let them be a light into the firmament for heaven to divide the day and the night. So it's not like to give you a light that God, you know, that can you imagine that the light came to the world before the sun and before the, the moon? Totally very, very un, un, un understood. It's a verse four, sun and the moon later. And why is that? God has things which are amazing. When I read such thing, you know, I said, ah, light. So he gave the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be signs. Listen to me, signs and for seasons and for days and years. So the coming, next coming of the Messiah is not announced in, 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 in God is keeping it in his knowledge. But what was said that the first coming of the Messiah was, the, was described in detail and the Jews rejected in the book of Daniel chapter nine that on that 70 weeks, 70 weeks, and we're gonna explain it. Like I said, it was always hard for me to understand the 70 weeks of Daniel, but God gave me grace to be able to understand it. And I'm explaining it to you, not today. Because here you have to understand that it's time. So the time when come in the fullness of time, Christ come. And in the fullness of time, he'll come again. In the fullness of time, there will be the judgment and the justice of God will be revealed among men. And the righteousness will prevail, prevail. And people who are righteous gonna reign and rule for thousand three years on the earth with their Messiah. And they have a different nature. They will have a body which is like the body of Jesus, immortal, immortal, invisible, immortal, can go through doors. And they will live and reign for thousand years. Well, the devil will be bound for a thousand years. That's not our topic today, but here he changed and, and the timing. So God wants us to know the timing. That light things was given for us to know the time. And when the Jews are keeping the Sabbath meal every seven years, the land has to have rest. Break that cycle and God punished the people of Israel because they didn't honor the seven years, which is the Sabbath of the land. He said, what is this? We're gonna do this, give vitamin to the land and gonna give you crops. Bravo. You're smart, but the timing of God on the eight years, he was give, on the seven, six years, he give you double. So he can cope for, for you for the seven years. So you don't have to cultivate the land. God has timing, he know what he's doing. He was the one who created this earth one day, and then he gonna recreate another earth and another heaven. And by, before then he has to recreate us on his likeness. We lost it one day. But he recovering us to be in his presence and his kingdom. So here, he, the Daniel is talking about the, the prophecy of this. Uh, I don't care about his name, you know, that uh, Pope and this uh, uh, emperor who changed the time. And he said he changed the time and the season. He, that's the Lord. He changed time and season. Removed kings and set kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that they know understanding. God is very precise about the timing. And here is this guy, that evil one. He come and change the time. They change from the Saturday and Sabbath to Sunday. They give us the Easter and, and I celebrate Easter and I celebrate East, uh, uh, Christmas. And I celebrate them twice because I have Catholic in my family. So telling me that you don't want to celebrate Christ's resurrection, up to you. And his death, up to you. His birth, the incarnation of God, he left his glory to be like you and me. 
Come on. Come on, man. What pride are you in your soul? So here is the thing. These are added events, but they are not instead of the feast of the Lord. The feast of the Lord are eternal covenants because they have to do with the timing. And in fact, that the three events that didn't come yet is in the timing of God. The feast of the trumpet is for the rapture. And the feast of the, the tabernacle is for the thousand years when God will sit with man. This is the dwelling of God with man. They are all prophetic. Three feasts are, didn't happen again yet. The timing of God. Israel, like I preached last week, and I warned the guy of Iran. That was before the war, the same night. Don't push the button. Don't. Have you got two dollars? No, we already talked about that. Name of Jesus, be here. Be here. Be free. In the name of Jesus, may peace come upon Australia and the people who are in it. May peace of the Lord come upon you and give you peace and rest. Those demons who are torturing you, they have to leave by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. Women, don't be afraid of men. What happened is meant to be. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. And don't be attacking at the same time. What happened is designed by the Lord. The man is not in his senses. And that's why we have to fight that sickness. And the only one, all the demons came and they saw Jesus and bowed to him and they said, you come before the time to torture us. Every Christian has to be able to do this. You come before the time to torture us. In the name of Jesus, be free. Australia will not be an entire place of illnesses. No. Sanity will come upon us. When I was just like really into the beginning of the uh, lockdown, I was screaming from the same pulpit here, why Australian government wants to give billions of dollars for mental illness? I didn't know. We give them jobs. Give them money when they are locked down. And when, I didn't know of what they did to humankind in this country and around the world. Open the door for the mental illness in the children, in the adults. Never seen such waves of mental de demonization, you know? Cover the woman for when she prophesied because of the angels. And the angels there are not the good angels. She wouldn't be covered for the good angels. She covered from evil angels. Cover your children, cover your church. Put them back to the, the feast of the Lord. Because you will not understand the covenant unless you are in part of it. The Jews denied their Messiah and the 5,000 years waiting for him to come. But he will come. But Israel will be saved by the atomic bomb when they see him and say, ah, oh, they will see the stabbing and say, yeah, yeah, this is the one. When the spirit of God will come upon them, Zechariah 14. And they see the wounds on his stabbing. And they say, oh, and they start to weep upon him. Israel, awake. This is your time, your Messiah came. Just read the book, the New Testament. The New Testament is just the, the understanding. The, the Muslim guy last week in, in Fairfield was telling, oh, this is with the book. And I said, the Old Testament is the word of God sealed. And the, Old, the New Testament concealed, like is revealed. God revealed things. And still into the last part of the book of uh, uh, John, he said, oh, this part, don't, don't describe it to people yet. They cannot take it. It's too heavy for them. The time will come when it's revealed. So we are into the stage when one crazy man pushed the button and the whole world can go into eternal suffering. And this way, and many people aren't saved. So today I'm just telling you, Set the ways of salvation for your children. I don't want to make it too long, but it's for seasons and for times. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the eyes of the Christian will be open to the truth which is in the Bible. They are not replacing the Jews. They can't, but they can be Jews as good as. And they can enter into the covenant which was with Abraham. And under that covenant, there is salvation for every man and every woman. 
that the, God, the blood of Jesus can save us and the covenant of God was made. So I pray that they will see the truth. Jews and non-Jews, they will see as for the Muslim world, Lord, and they come and now uh, that uh, Saudi Arabia king or coming king, he gives them the Salvatore Monday, the savior of the world. He introduced it to the Muslim world. So I pray that the Muslim world will receive the salvation, the, the savior of the world, not only as a, a, a picture with expensive money, but they will receive him as the savior of this world. Savior for the Jews, savior for the Muslims, savior for Australia, savior for everyone who needs salvation. Christ is coming, brother and sister, and he's coming soon. Better be prepared. Amen.